Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I think we're going to have a go at painting something like this, which is a um, Italian landscape view. Now because it's Mother's Day or Mother's Week as I'm calling it, I'm going to use Arches paper this week. Most expensive, 100% cotton, £140 in weight. Uh, a million pounds a sheet, but hey, who cares? It's Mother's Week. And I'm going to, this is a, I've got a sheet which I tore in half and half and half again. So I think that makes it an eighth sheet. And although I don't need to, I'm going to stick it down with washi tape. And that's another extravagance. Um, it's pretty, this one, isn't it? This washi tape stuff, I think, is a wonderful invention. It's so sweet. And I think it influences what you paint when you've put this down. You kind of think, oh, I ought to make my painting kind of, um, what's the word, coordinate, or at least not clash with those colors. It's quite inspirational, isn't it? Um, and I was thinking I would paint something like this. I did this a little while ago, it was a test piece, um, and so I'm going to try and do it again, something like that. So we're going to do it a vignette style, so I won't paint to the edges. And the first thing I'm going to do is put in the line of the hill there, just one curve. And then I will probably put in the mountain line, which is uh, in the background. And then immediately, having done that, I don't like it, so I'll try not to drop my drawer on the floor again. I'm going to take that curve back a bit. Don't be afraid to erase things. But when you rub off the bits of rubber, try to use a brush, any brush will do. This is a shaving brush that came from Sylvia in Germany, and I use it all the time. And the reason I did that is because why I changed the line, I'm going to change the line, is I'm going to put the house, well, it's actually a chapel. I'm going to put the chapel here and the bell tower here, and I don't want it to come in the wrong place for the hill. I want that line, that curve to be, there we go, that's fine. That'll be all right, so I'm just going to sit down now to draw this. I think that's probably a little bit high. So we make that break the line of the hills. So we've got a little dome and a little cross, and I'm going to work down. And then here we have a bell inside there. And then the roof. You can get this sketch on our website. If you go to dianeanton.com, all our sketches are free. You have the option of paying for them if you want to. You can choose your price. It's set up for $1, but you can change that to zero. Or you can change it to a larger amount if you feel that way inclined. We also have actually on here, if you don't want to go to the website for whatever reason, um, we have now, <coughs> sorry, YouTube has introduced a new um, feature. When you are watching a video, you'll see there's a, a box there which gives you the chance to, um, to donate. I think everyone's got this now. So you can actually just click on it and make a donation if you feel you want to help support the channel. And so we put some windows in there. It's very useful. People have been very generous over the last year or so. And it's so, so helpful because 
you know, the amount of money that you earn from um, YouTube is not very good. But I mean, it's okay. And I don't do this for money anyway. I do want to actually I'll make that quite clear. I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing it to try to help people. So that's the, uh, I think it's a bit too wide. It wants to be a bit narrower, so. Uh, yeah. Italian style, so we'll have some um, cypress trees behind here. And uh, some more undergrowth here. A couple more trees. I'm just copying my original painting. Oh my, I wouldn't want to call it an original painting, it's just. Uh, And then here in the foreground, I had a large patch of poppies. So we just scribble something in there to indicate that. Okay, so I'll just get my paints ready. Okay, so I've got my A Gallo set of paints here, handmade in Assisi, Italy. So this is the color swatches for this particular set. Um, beautiful colours, lovely intense colours, so I'm going to use that since I'm painting Italy. It does seem to be reasonable, so I'll just, uh, I'm not quite sure where to put this, I'll move those brushes. These are my draw well brushes, which you can order from Japan if you want. Contact them via their website, uh, the website is below in the description. Um, very reasonable prices, they're 100% synthetic, so uh, totally um, consumable by vegans and um, I, I don't much like painting from um, boxes of paints to be quite honest. I prefer to use my tried and tested method of squeezing some paint into a little tin but these paints are so nice I can't uh, can't resist so um, yes it's difficult to find the space. Anyway so we've got these three brushes here and I think that's probably going to do um, first thing I'm going to do is stop faffing around and I will put some sky in. So I've got my large number 14 here and um, take some clean paints, complete, oh look, <laughs> some clean water and just wet the sky and you don't really need to do anything terribly strange here. This is Periwinkle from the box of paints. I'm just going to drop some of that in very lightly and loosely to give a nice blue sky, leaving a few lighter patches and a few darker ones just, just to let that sort of, you know. And then I'm going to leave this middle bit for the second and I'm just going to come in with some pink Diluted a little bit with blue and uh, a tiny bit of yellow. And I'm just going to paint the earth here. And it could be earth, could be grass. But the idea was that it was to convey the heat. So it's not green everywhere. So that's that. And um, then I'll put the flowers in the front here, which I'll do with spatter. And I'm going to use something similar to that colour for the stonework of the building. Um, where is my quinacridone? Just any kind of neutral colour really, because it just it indicates stonework. I just put that in and then when that's dry we can put the shadows which will give us a bit more of the shape and then perhaps we might put the roof in too but a bit redder. And that's got to dry. A nice Umbrian red. 
And then I think the next thing is going to be to um, take some mauve for the mountains in the distance. And if this, uh, what's the word, if this runs, it doesn't matter. Because we are trying to paint a picture, not to um, recreate a photograph. That's it, that's a move. Just bring that all the way down. And I said I was going to do this more vignette style, didn't I? So I'll just take some of that out at the edge using a trusty tissue. I forgot that. Never mind, it's Mother's Week. I can do what I want. Um, so then we want some dark green. And we'll put some, some nice trees in the background. in some bushes just with a few strokes of green going along there. Wait for that to dry before we put in the trees and the rest. And while we are waiting for that to dry, I'm going to splash the front here with lots of jolly drops of, paint, of water. And this is where we're going to have our it's slightly greenish because that's what was in the water bowl, um, but it doesn't matter. So we'll just pick up some red. We'll try anyway. Probably ought to put a piece of paper over the rest of the painting. Protect it from my jolly drips and drops. Having done some drips and drops, you just break them up and join them together a bit. Make the ones in the front a bit bigger. This is called playing. And in the background a bit smaller. And then perhaps we want some darker red. So we'll go to, I'll go to my trusted, tried and trusted Lizarin Crimson. And that's some, some darker red and perhaps bits of purple as well. I think I'm getting paint on me, but never mind. And then we probably need some black. So I'll wake up this black. Wake up black. So that would be ready to put the black centers in the poppies. Mm. 
Okay, and then I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush. And we'll go for green. Got several different greens here, you can sort of mix them together. is when you well it can be a problem the problem is when you add green to black to red you get black or brown anyway so I think I'm going to wait for that to dry before I do anything else there and I'm painting on paper which I don't normally use which is arches We'll see how I feel about that at the end. It's not dry yet. for these trees as well. sit down to do this bit here. I did use some ink on the um, original, so I'll probably do that. And I might bring that in now. And I think I'll probably use 0.3. I'm just going round the lines. that I drew with the paint. And if your perspective has gone a little bit wonky or you can't really, because of the size, you can't really paint the details in. You can do them with the pen. I 
I find it's um, easier to paint using, uh, to draw or paint, holding the pen further back, not right up near the business end, so to speak. And that gives you more um, interesting shapes. I'm going to wait for that to dry a bit more before I put the pen in, but down here it's quite nice that it's running a little bit. some scribble scribbled in here with the pen. We won't get the black of the pen, but we'll get scribble lines from the red. And I'll probably put a hairdryer on this shortly. Now, first paintings I did was a pen and ink. I used to, we went on holiday to Scotland in 1977 and um, that was when I first really started to do watercolour. Before that I'd been playing around with oils and acrylics. At that era I didn't obviously have oils and acrylics with me when we were on holiday so I just um, I was doing some pen and ink, which I still I still have some of those paintings. One of them framed in the dining room. It's not very good, but it reminds me of the year that we spent our holiday in Arran. It's all changed there now. Okay, so I'm liking these runs here. I think that's something I'm going to encourage and I might encourage it a little bit more up here. This vertical look is quite interesting. Okay, so that's dry now. The red has come up quite a lot lighter. Um, in order to sort of maintain a kind of consistency in the uh, uh, what's the word, in the tonality of this, I'm just going to lift some of the uh, green out of the trees a little bit to make them a little bit lighter. You just add some water to what you painted and lift it out with a tissue and it gives a nice texture as well. And then I'm thinking, well, I probably need another couple of trees, or one at least, perhaps here. balance that off a little bit. I'm not going to touch most of the rest of it because I think it's probably um, okay. Then I do need a little bit more in the way of leaves. So I'm going to take some yellow and um, have a little bit of yellow in the front here. Not too much though. I don't think it wants too much. I'm just going to darken the 
corners of the windows and um, one or two little spots up there. Put some little bit more shadow down here and that's a doorway so that should be and then this here a little bit darker we give that a little bit more three-dimensionality without outlining everything and then with the the blackish color that we had we'll just put some um, centers. This is just black watercolour. Just put some centers in these so that we know that they're poppies. Sort of try and find places where black centers would be. some more green and put some leaves in. Poppies don't have straight leaves, do they? They have kind of chunky ones, but we won't worry too much about accuracy here. Just it's a green, a green, greenness. It's not a realistic uh, painting, it's, but you can see perfectly well that it's a house and or a chapel, church. You can see pretty well that these are impressionistic poppies. This painting's been waiting to be done for a while. I, uh, I did the sketch while it was still winter, I think. There's another one of my, um, another Italian landscape in the archives that she might be interested in. So I'm just strengthening up the colour here a bit with some alizarin crimson. I'll put the colours that I used in the description below and I'm not going to fiddle with it anymore. I'm going to leave this uh, area here pretty much blank I think. Um, I was thinking about um, I put a few sc scritchy scratchy lines in perhaps. Uh, John Blockley, I don't know if any of you know John Blockley's work. He was uh, very, um, I, I liked him a lot, he was a very influential pastelist and watercolour in uh, the end of the last century. And uh, he used to like to leave lots of vertical slopes just representing um, distance in uh, rather than trying to create three dimensions. Somehow he did something a little bit more 
So I think because I was thinking about him, that's probably why that happened today. So there we are. That's going to have to do. It's uh, my painting for Mother's Week, number one. You could use this idea as a basis for a Mother's Day card if you wanted to, or you could just enjoy painting it for yourself. So there's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please subscribe and turn on notifications to see more like this when we post. There's a couple of other Italian landscapes for you to try in our back catalogue, and we'll link to those in the description below. There's also a fun new feature now to help you show your appreciation for the videos, if you wish, called Super Thanks, and you'll find a button which says thanks just below the video. And don't forget our website where you can get all our sketches for free and our great channel membership. So I'll let you go now and I uh, hope to see you back here again soon. Have a lovely evening and happy painting. Bye now.